ah, it's, it's getting worse and worse. Ugh, that... Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. The Papa is back with a differential equation exercise. And if you take a closer look, this function of x right here doesn't have a y next to it, so that means this thing right here is a non-homogeneous linear ordinary differential equation. We haven't dealt with this before, just with this abstract proof. And we're just going to apply the um, theorem that, that we have proven on this thing right here this abstract stuff. Link will be in the description. So let's just dive right in. So here's an algorithm for solving something like this right here. So at first we are going to set this function of x equal to zero. That means we are going to solve the homogeneous version of this differential equation. So that means we end up with y prime minus 4y being equal to zero. And now we can add 4y on both sides. So we end up with y prime equals to 4y. And now we can divide both sides by y. We don't want it to be 0. As you see, I'm going to pull off a little black pen, red pen here. And now we can integrate both sides with respect to x. And then we are already done, basically. So integrating both sides with respect to x is going to give us, well, on this side, it's just going to evaluate to 4x plus an arbitrary constant c. And this side right here, you can introduce a proper substitution to get rid of this weird term right here. Doesn't matter how you do it, but still going to end up with the natural log of y. So our result is just the natural log of y being equal to 4 times x plus an arbitrary constant c. And now we can use the exponential function on both sides. And then we get the final result for our y. So that means we end up with the homogeneous or complementary solution of y. That's why I have this little h here. You can also place a c there if you want to call it complementary. It's going to be e to the 4x on the one hand, plus some arbitrary constant c, but we can use this exponential function property to just turn this into another constant, e schlange, for example. I know you guys are waiting for this e schlange to pop up anytime soon. And now I would like to use a technique called variation of constant constants, <laughs> variation of constants. Um, and all that really means is that we take a new function, for example, u of x, which we want to be um, differentiable and multiply it by this thing. But you see, um, this function right here can absorb this constant right here. So for example, if this is, um, I don't know, x plus c, just absorb this constant into here, for example, it doesn't matter. So what we can do instead, we can just say, this is e schlange of x. So let's just turn this e schlange into a function of x itself. So this makes things easier. And well, our goal for now is it to differentiate this thing and plug this complementary solution into here to get our particular solution. So that also means that I'm going to call it y once again. y prime is now nothing but, well, both of those are functions of x. That means we need, we need to use the product rule in this case. So the first part is 4 times e to the 4x, e schlange of x, plus e schlange prime of x, we don't know anything about this bad boy at the moment, times e to the 4x. And just like I said, we want to plug this thing into here and see what we get at first. So that also means we have 4 times e to the 4x e schlange of x plus e schlange prime of x e to the 4x minus 4 times e to the 4x e schlange of x. And the cool thing is this is going to happen every time. This and that is going to cancel out. So that's quite cool. That was the point of doing this uh, solving of the homogeneous case. is equal to e to the 5x cosine of 3 times x. And well, now we have this expression right here and why not divide both sides by e to the 4x? It's never going to be zero. And then we have an expression for e schlange prime of x. So if we do this, we end up with e schlange prime of x being equal to, well, this term and this term is going to cancel out to e to the x cosine of three times x. And well, now it's just a matter of integrating both sides with respect to x to get our e schlange of x. So integrating both sides with respect to x. What is this going to evaluate to? I would like to call this thing right here i, and I'm going to see you on the next blackboard. 
So we are pretty much almost done, to be honest. So all that's really left is to integrate this. And how would you do something like this? Well, we want to do Phoenix integration. No, just, just integration by parts here in Germany. Some people call it Phoenix integration because our original integral just pops up out of the ashes. Never mind. Let's go ahead and get started. So we need something to differentiate and something to integrate plus minus plus here, yeah, right? Three iterations. And it doesn't quite matter what you integrate and what you differentiate. Let's just integrate e to the x so that you don't get any ugly fractions. And then we have e to the x and e to the x integrated two times. So always just e to the x. And we need to differentiate the cosine of 3 times x. Well, differentiated a first time is going to give us negative 3 times the sine of 3 times x. And this differentiated a second time is just negative 9 times the cosine of 3 times x. And now we would like to multiply this together and this together and take the integral of this thing. And then we are already done, to be honest. So the first part is going to evaluate 2 e to the x, cosine of 3 times x. Negative and negative becomes positive, so positive 3 times e to the x, sine of 3 times x, and then negative, and I'm going to bring this 9 to the front using the linearity of the integral, integral of cosine 3 times x, e to the x, dx. And if you might notice, this thing right here is just i. And what we can do now, we can add 9i on both sides to get exactly 10i being equal to, and you can factor out this e to the x if you like, e to the x. Um, yeah, and don't forget your arbitrary constant c in the end. It's an indefinite integral, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, e to the x cosine of 3 times x plus 3 times sine of 3 times x. And now we can divide both sides by 10, pulling off a black pen, red pen once again. And don't forget your arbitrary constant c. Um, and then you are already done. And don't forget what your i is. i, in fact, is just our e schlange of x. Because e prime, e schlange prime of x integrated with respect to x is just going to give us e schlange of x. And well, we are already done, to be honest. All that's really left is to plug our value for e schlange of x into this complementary solution to get our general solution for this differential equation. So, that also means y general of x is now nothing but. So we have e to the 4x, yeah, right, <laughs> times e to the x cosine of 3 times x plus 3 sine of 3 times x over 10 plus some arbitrary constant c. Well, and what you can do, you can bring this to the inside if you like, but this, in general, is already our general solution for y. And yeah, this thing right here is going to solve the original differential equation for all values of c. So you can plug in some initial values, for example, uh, y of zero, uh, 0 is equal to 0, for example, I don't know. And then you might end up with uh, your desired constant. And now we are done. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. If you want to support me, a bit more link to my Patreon is in the description. I'm doing all the stuff in my free time. So I would highly appreciate some support from you guys. And up until the next video, have a... Um, ah, it's, it's getting worse and worse. Ugh, that, it's once again culture and technique day. Ugh, see ya.